So this is, um, I think, part six, maybe seven, um, in uh, staying ahead of your behind. It's a colorectal cancer screening. Uh, why are we spending so much time on it? Well, the first reason is it's complicated. I, you know what? I, if you're thinking, gosh, this is complicated, I, I can tell you, I do this for a living, and I had forgotten how complicated it was. Um, I, in a like vein, I'll be, uh, I planned on doing one on um, heart failure. And if you go back in my videos, I've done one on heart failure, but that's just on um, end-stage heart failure. I, I'm planning one on uh, subclinical heart failure, and I have to tell you, it is also very complicated. A lot of things in life are, and uh, <clears throat> that's just the way it is. It was, in our generation, many of us remember, I think it was Rosanna, uh, Rosanna Dana said, you know, it's, it's always something. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of questions we're going to be dealing with today. Uh, one is the um, tumor growth rate. And why is that interesting or why, why is that important? Uh, we'll talk about that in, in a minute. And another question that comes up a lot is, well, what's the difference between FOBT, the fecal occult blood testing, and uh, fecal immunochemical testing? And why is there so much distinction between the two? I'm going to cover both of those. So, but first, a brief introduction. Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E -E this is the prevention channel. We look at uh, things that kill uh, baby boomers, um, heart attack, stroke, cancer, dementia, and um, how to av avoid and prevent them. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, again, first item is um, tumor growth rates. So here's, a, here's what ha classically happens with 95% of the tumors. 95% of tumors in um, colorectal cancer are what we call adenocarcinoma. Now, <clears throat> those of you who are biologists would say, well, no, wait a minute. Either there should be, it should be an adenoma or a carcinoma. Adenoma is uh, something that came from a, a gland tissue. Carcinoma is something that came from epithelial tissue. Why are these called adenocarcinoma? Well, um, I, I don't know that I can get, I don't know that I know the whole reason. What I do know is that they do. They start out, they're called, and if you do know, please, um, please tell us in the comments. Uh, they start off as what we call adenomatous tissue. And uh, an adenomatous polyp is not, by definition, malignant yet. But they do grow into malignancies. And um, what's the growth rate here? This is the uh, inside of the colon, by the way, and this is the uh, adenomatous tissue. Um, this, this process usually takes years. So it's like the situation with um, abdominal aortic aneurysm. When I start talking about that, sometimes you can see the fear in uh, the patient's eyes about abdominal aneurysm. They get the idea of a large balloon inside their belly that's about to pop. But then as we start talking, uh, it becomes clear that I don't have quite that level of uh, emotion over it. And here's why. Even after we discover an abdominal or aneurysm, we typically follow it for years before you decide. And with many of them, you never end up uh, doing surgery. It takes a while for that growth. Same thing here with these. So why are over... Why are 51,000 people dying in the U.S. from these tumors, these cancers? And why are over 30,000 uh, of them preventable, of those deaths preventable? Because we let it go on for year after year after year after year after year. And had we done screening up during this time frame, we could have, it could have been removed and uh, no cancer developed. So again, you've got plenty of time to do it. You just need to do it. Okay, so that's why tumor growth rate is very, very important. And again, we're not talking about the growth rate of this part. We're talking about the growth rate and evolution from adenoma or a polyp to the actual cancer itself. Now, 
that's the first question. Uh, the second question is, what's the difference between FIT and FOBT? FOBT is what we had 30 years ago, fecal occult blood testing. It is, um, the way I understand it, it's looking mostly at a chemical reaction with the heme mole uh, molecule itself. Heme is, uh, you remember, hemoglobin uh, is two things. Uh, it's a large protein that has seats that hold the heme molecule. The heme molecule holds iron. So the, uh, if you're looking for blood, and, and here's the whole thing behind uh, colorectal cancer screening, um, these things tend to bleed. And we, when feces goes by and, and hits against them, these are friable, uh, meaning they'll, some of this will fall off and then it'll bleed. That is the essence of the problem with these home tests because uh, they don't bleed all the time. So there's a lot of false negatives. Quite often you'll have these in there, but you won't have bleeding. That's why you get a lot of uh, false negatives, even with the DNA test. So let's go back to uh, fe fetal immunochemical, uh, fecal immunochemical testing versus fecal occult blood testing. So the fecal occult blood testing, again, uh, comment if you have uh, corrections, if you have information you want to provide uh, me and the, and the viewers on this issue. But again, fecal occult testing is looking at this, and it's a chemical reaction. This is an immunological reaction, and it's looking at uh, the globulin. So uh, FOBT, which we've had for 30 years, 30 something years, and the FIT, which is the newer test, and which is basically, for the most part, supplanted the fecal occult blood testing. This uh, FIT has not been around nearly as long, uh, just a few years. The fetal immunochemical test, um, <clears throat> it's newer, the newer test uh, detects blood in the stool. Uh, it uses, uses a specific antibody to the protein. Now, when you think about it, that's why you don't have the problems, some of the problems with cross-reactivity and managing your diet that you have with the old fecal occult test. The fecal occult test, um, occult blood test, would react to even plant, some plant uh, chemicals that uh, cross-reacted with uh, hemoglobin, I mean the heme molecule. This is, a, again, an antibody to uh, the globin part of the hemoglobin. Um, so there's another place that there's a major advantage, upper GI bleeding. So if you have bleeding in your stomach, um, again, with the old uh, fetal occult blood test, you would get a false positive. With the FIT, you don't. And why is that? Well, blood in the upper GI tract is digested. We're talking about, again, the protein here, and the protein gets digested. So you don't have the problems with uh, uh, taking iron or heme products or uh, dietary issues in the FIT test that you have with the fecal occult blood test. Um, <clears throat> let me see if there's anything else that's... Yeah, it's a CLIA wave test. Uh, it's read as negative and positive. Um, there's some other things about it we'll cover in just a second. Um, this uh, picture of the test, I'm not going to explain it. it. I'm just put that out there to help give you a visual that, again, we're talking about a, an immunochemical test, not just a chemical reaction to something, to something like a heme. This, you can look it up on, um, on the web, uh, very clear directions on how to do it. And uh, yes, it's a home test. And um, no, none of these tests for home tests for um, fecal occult blood or fecal uh, DNA are pretty. Um, but if you think that's ugly, try having a colonoscopy. Um, <clears throat> thank you again for your interest. And uh, choose some sort of method. Choose a good one and go out and get your... Uh, and get screened for uh, colorectal cancer.